We're gonna put a laptop together. Okay. <laughs> this is for you because it's gonna be easy for me. You have to do it. No. <laughs> Here's the box. Just do it. You just have to do it. Looks like an eyeball. <laughs> Push the edge into the place. Wait, before you do that, I want to put this micro SD card in. I think it will end this way. This way. Push the edges. to be for kids. Oh, it is? Yeah, you're supposed to teach kids like parts of the computer. Hey, you're making me do it? I'm almost 40. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have, we don't have kids. <laughs> Did you think it would be a good toy for kids? A kid probably could do it better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did fine. It's cute though. It is, huh? Mm. And it's like a full Windows computer. And the keyboard, like this feels like the Apple uh, iPad. The Apple iPad, iPad one? Yeah, keyboard. it's really thick, huh? Mm. It's nice. It's not fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking a while for me. Hello everybody. Before we get into the full review of the Cano PC, there's a couple important things I wanted to talk about. So here we are on their website. The going rate for it is $250 and it includes a free webcam. There's no cameras built into the Cano PC, so if you want to do video conferencing stuff, you'll need a webcam. 
So here's the webcam that Cano PC sends you if you buy it from them. I bought the Cano PC on sale at Best Buy. It was a little bit cheaper than the $250, but it did not come with a webcam. As for the specs, it says it comes with Windows 10 Home, but they forget to mention that it comes in S mode. So in S mode, you'll be able to install any of the apps on the Microsoft Store, but anything outside of that means you'll have to come out of S mode. Now it's free to do that, and it's pretty easy. If you don't know how to do it and you want to know, just ask me in the comments and I'll try to walk you through it. As for the processor, it says it comes with the Intel Celeron N4000. The one I have comes with the Intel Celeron N4020, which is basically the same thing, but it has a little bit faster boost clock. It's probably not going to make a noticeable difference. So after booting into Windows 10 on the Cano PC, I've noticed that the Windows version it comes with was very old. So it's going to take a lot of updates to get it up to the current version. Now if you've worked with these slow laptops before, Windows Update likes to work in the background using up a lot of resources and it bogs down a already slow laptop even more. So what I like to do is go to the Microsoft website and download an installed Windows 10 that has the latest version. This way I won't have to wait for Windows Update to complete and I'll also remove all the bloatware so it'll make the PC run a little bit better. So I did that. And then I ran into an issue with drivers, which is normally not a problem because manufacturers have drivers available on their website, but Cano PC doesn't. Cano PC has Windows 10 images available. So because I'm missing the sound drivers and the accelerometer for the tablet, now I have to use the Windows 10 image and reinstall the windows I just got rid of. So anyways, they walk you through how to do it on this website. I happen to have the KPC uh, 2010HS one. Uh, it does tell you to follow this article, which actually does not tell you how to do it using the image. So I had to kind of figure it out myself. But eventually I did get the Windows 10 image back on there. So it reverted back to how the Cano PC originally came in. Now there was another issue after that. So apparently if you install this Windows 10 image, your Cano PC will no longer be activated. So you'll have to buy another Microsoft Windows 10 license in order for it to be activated yourself. I reached out to Cano PC support and they said they couldn't help me with it. I'd have to contact Microsoft. So if you're planning on installing a different OS and then going back to Windows eventually, since Cano PC only has a Windows 10 image available that has all the drivers, you're probably going to have to get another Windows 10 license. But that said, I have found another use for the Cano PC. Let's go on with the review. Okay, so here's the new Cano PC. Came out a little bit less than a year ago. Here it is in its case. The keyboard case. It has this little strap here that you can put around it like that. Um, if you take the strap off, it kind of falls off pretty easily. And that's the back panel. Cano. So there's the battery, there's the speaker, uh, here's the back clear cover case, it's kind of cool looking. So here, if it'll focus, is the power button, the volume up, volume down, there's a headphone jack, and a USB-C port, but this USB-C port is power only, so it doesn't do any kind of data. Uh, and it kind of takes a proprietary jack and needs a 12 volt USB-C. So you can't use, you know, the USB-C chargers that you would like your phone and stuff. Um, if you can find some laptop uh, chargers or 12 volt USB-C, so it'll work with that. But it, it doesn't do any da data. Um, it's kind of a drawback there. Uh, there's nothing on the top. Our USB 3.0 port. There's two of those. A full size HDMI port. This actually does do 4K at uh, 60 Hertz. So the keyboard is kind of weird. It's a weird setup. There's the Windows, it says apps on it, but it's just the Windows key. There's a function key here that if you press, uh, it'll do those functions F1 through F12. If you don't, it'll just do these uh, keys, like here's brightness. Uh, the weird thing is, Alt and Control are switched. 
normally a controller is on this side and alt is on this side. Um, same as it here. Here's the arrow keys. And actually the keyboard is a bit small, but it's pretty nice to type. One thing I don't like about this uh, trackpad, it feels pretty smooth, it's kind of plasticky, but this part, the clicking doesn't register too well. And it feels like there's two layers of clicks. The first layer doesn't quite do anything. You have to push it down a little bit harder in order to register the click. See, that click doesn't do anything. I have to go all the way down. There's a little light right here that turns on when the thing is on. I have no idea what this light does. It doesn't turn on at all when I'm using it. So, here's where the tablet connects to. You can see there's the uh, connection ports right there. So actually attaching it, it's pretty easy. And then you slide this part right into here. There's a magnet right here so it doesn't come off very easily. Unless you're sitting at a table that's a good height, it'll look kind of... The angle won't be very good. So let's turn it on. So you can use this, or you can use this power button up here. So if you haven't seen my Chromebook video, here's the Galaxy Chromebook. This is probably going to surprise you a bit. See how hefty that thing is? So here's a neat little thing. This is Ubuntu and it works perfectly. There's internet works, the keyboard keys work for volume, the brightness works. Right now this is at max brightness. So yeah, you can actually use this as a Linux laptop if you don't want to use Windows on it. So here's what doesn't quite work. So this should be upside down, so it's not the correct side up. However, it does work in landscape mode both ways. It takes a while to go into the suspend mode, but these lights will be always blinking and on when it's in suspend mode. And the problem is, when you're carrying it around, if you happen to press the keyboard key, like I'm pressing right now, it'll wake from sleep. Which is kind of a pain. The sound's gonna be a little bit muffled because the speaker is on the bottom. So it's very well fast enough for indie games. Playing with the uh, trackpad here, so it's not going to be very good. Definitely need a mouse on this one. <laughs> 